It's a mixture of cheeses that's salty and sharp, and when it bakes, it locks in the zucchini and gets really melted. We're gonna do some big picnic energy. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deb and welcome back to The Smitten Kitchen. Today we're making my zucchini and ricotta galette. It is a flaky homemade pastry crust and it's filled with cheese and garlic and herbs and fresh zucchini and it's so summery, it's so delicious for a picnic or potluck or a light lunch and it's gonna look like you worked a lot harder than you did. To get this galette started, we're gonna make the dough first. We're gonna use flour, butter, sour cream or plain yogurt, lemon juice, salt, ice water, and then at the end we'll put some egg on for shine. We're gonna start with one and a quarter cups of flour. I'm using all-purpose flour. Then we're gonna add some salt. Combine the flour and salt. We're gonna add half a cup of butter, which I'm just gonna cut down a little bit. This is cold from the fridge, and you definitely wanna work with cold butter. And what I do is I use this to work the cold butter into the flour and salt mixture and mix it until the butter is in the size of, I would say, small peas to like large couscous. I think I could make this in my sleep. I might be sleeping right now. <laughs> and this is sort of the range. Smaller is fine, but it's nice to have a few bigger ones in there too. We're gonna add some cold water, quarter cup. Very cold helps keep your butter cold. You don't want your butter to get warm. Once your butter gets warm, it melts, the dough gets sticky, and you'll think, making doughs is too difficult, I don't wanna do this. It's actually really easy, you just wanna keep everything cold. We're gonna use some sour cream or plain yogurt. I've got sour cream here today. We are gonna use about two teaspoons of lemon juice. I love the lemon juice in the crust, but if you don't have a lemon, you could use a lime, or you could even use some wine vinegar. I'm gonna bring it all together until we have like one big, messy, sort of craggy blob of dough. We're going to scrape this into a large piece of parchment paper. And then I'm gonna fold the sides of the pastry over the dough, flattening it a little bit, kind of making a packet shape. This goes in the fridge for an hour till it feels solid. In the meanwhile, we'll make the filling. For the filling, we're gonna use some basil, some Parmesan, some ricotta, a little bit of mozzarella, salt, zucchini, garlic, pepper, and olive oil. We're gonna prepare the zucchini. And to do that, we're gonna slice it thin. I've left the stem end on, and that's my handle here, so I can keep my fingertips intact. I'm gonna spread them out on this tray, and I'm gonna sprinkle them with a little bit of salt. And then I'm gonna set them aside for 30 minutes. The zucchini is gonna soften, and it's going to release some of its liquid, so when we bake it inside the galette, it will be the perfect texture. And while they drain, and while the dough finishes chilling, I'm going to make What we're gonna do for the garlic oil is I just need a tablespoon of olive oil. Not a lot. We don't wanna get this too oily. And one minced garlic clove. Oh, it smells good in here. As soon as like garlic or onion hits oil in a pan or butter, someone's like, hey, what are you making? That smells nice. And then we're gonna put it in the oil. I'm just gonna give it a little stir. Next, I'm gonna to mix together the cheese layer that goes underneath the zucchini, which honestly brings the whole operation together. This is half a cup of ricotta, and I am using half a cup of grated Parmesan. Um, if you don't have Parmesan, you can use something else. You can use whatever cheese you like here. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of mozzarella, and I'm gonna grate this right in. All right, so we'll use one teaspoon of it here. Lots of black pepper for seasoning, salt. Should I have picked a bigger bowl? Maybe. Am I too stubborn to get a bigger bowl? Yes, I am. I think the mixture looks very thick and dry, but that is on purpose. You don't want to use too wet of a cheese mixture. We really want to control the moisture in a galette. That's why we're draining the zucchini, and that's why we're keeping this thick. When it all comes together, it won't be soggy. We're also gonna put some basil on at the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and slice it up now. I'm rolling up the leaves so they're easier to slice. And I'm just gonna cut them very thin. It's a party, watch this. Ooh, basil party. It's been about an hour and the dough is firm and cold and ready to roll out. I'm going to unwrap the dough and pull out the piece of parsley that got stuck in there. 
We're professionals. I'm gonna reuse this parchment. We're gonna use it to line the pan. I am going to flour my counter. It's a lot easier to roll out when it's cold. And we're gonna roll it to about a 14 inch round, but it is very important that you know that it does not matter if it's not perfectly round because no matter what shape you roll it, it's gonna all work out and be delicious. You can see those little bits of butter in the dough and they're gonna make it really flaky as it bakes up. This is how I like to transfer it. I like to give it like kind of, a, we're not creasing it, just a loose fold. And then I can unfold it just like that. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that cheese mixture for the filling and we're gonna spoon it all over. It looks very thick, but when it melts, it's gonna be perfect. We're gonna leave a, about a two to three inch border empty because we're gonna be folding that over the filling in a bit. It doesn't matter if it's lumpy, it's all gonna be delicious once we bake it. This really provides a lot of the flavor and seasoning and the complexity of the galette. We've got the cheese on the rolled out dough. We have zucchini, which has been salted and blotted. It's really soft and ready to bake up perfectly. I'm gonna shingle it around the pan, and I'm just gonna keep going in concentric circles, overlapping it slightly, decoratively. This is not Pinterest food. This is something that regular people can make in their regular kitchens with regular ingredients. There is no frippery here. We are gonna take the rest of the garlic oil, and we're gonna spoon it on, drizzle it over, Second to last step is we're gonna fold the edges over the filling all around, making creases. The center stays open. There is no wrong way to do this. I promise even if you do it out of order and your crimps look weird, it's still gonna look gorgeous when it comes out of the oven. Promise, pinky swear. Look, I am not making any great effort at neatness here, am I? So we'll go like this. I'm gonna beat the egg yolk with one teaspoon of water, which I'm just gonna eyeball from the tap. Boop until it's smooth and brush it on the crust. And that just gives it some shine. If you don't eat eggs, you can absolutely skip this step. We are gonna put this in the oven. We're gonna bake it for 30 to 40 minutes until it is deep golden brown and flaky and your kitchen smells so good. Ready. All right, checking for doneness. I think it's done. It looks so good. We're gonna finish it with a little basil. This would be so nice to take to a picnic or potluck with you. Like this wants to go to the park with your friends. They're gonna be so happy. You brought something summery and seasonal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is so good. There's so much flavor in there. The crust is so flaky, people will not believe that you made it yourself and that it was really easy and you don't have to tell them. I hope you love it. I hope you like the video. I hope you subscribe and I hope you come back next week because we're gonna make more delicious stuff in this Smitten Kitchen.